You're not good at Pokemon. You only play the easy games. How can you call yourself a Nuzlocker when you only play the new Who gen? Who do you think you are? Oh, dude, he's a fraud. You bought the game and thousands of people can see it. Just quit. You know, in my pursuit of incredible Pokemon content, I was only ever focused on making incredible content. But I never looked at the idea that to make incredible content, you actually have to accomplish something incredible. My friends, Pokemon Platinum is widely regarded as one of the hardest mainline Pokemon games around, and I've never Nuzlocked it. If you don't know what Nuzlocke is, pause the video now. I'm playing with hardcore rules as well, so it's gonna be even harder. But I didn't want this to just be another Nuzlocke, because Pokemon to the regular Nuzlocke are tools. They're dispensable. They're only there to serve a purpose. But for me, they're my companions, my friends, my family. And the attachment is what makes this more exciting. There's more at stake. On the other side of that coin, shiny hunting is tedious, repetitive, and long, but the reward at the end is astronomical. So who in their right mind would risk such rare Pokemon in a Nuzlocke format? Well, that's probably why you click this video. After two full months of streams right here on YouTube, YouTube, I present to you, my friends, the story of my attempt of a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum using exclusively shiny Pokemon. Our story begins at the beginning, funnily enough, where we're met with an elderly professor and our rival who in this case is called Al Gore. Algorithm. I hate that guy. And usually this is the easy part. You as the protagonist are presented with a briefcase which contains three Pokeballs, which in turn contain three starter Pokemon. Usually you'd select one square off against your rival and get on your merry way. However, I'm not gonna be doing that. Instead, I'm gonna spend the next considerable portion of my ever fleeting young adult life stood right here at this briefcase. Repeatedly opening it, choosing my favourite of the three Sinnoh starters, engaging in battle with Al Gore and yuck! the turtles off to the curb when they don't have a colour deformity. This method is called soft resetting, which I did for a while. I'll spare you the details, but just know that when I got it, I was excited. Uh -huh. YES! Oh my god! Yo! It happened! <laughs> That's so sick! Shiny turtle egg! Let's go! So once I found my shiny turtle, it was finally time to make our first steps towards progress. I floored Al Gore's boring non-shiny fire monkey, did all the intro stuff, you know, telling my mum I'm moving out and becoming a nomad, seeing some guy with blue hair curse out a body of water, training my turtle to level 8 so to avoid any early mishaps, and making my way to San Gem Town where I'm greeted by none other than Dawn, who clearly wants to kiss, but I'm having none of it. She holds my hand and leads me to the professor who decides to give me the colour deformed turtle wig that I already have in my pocket. And so we name him Ludwig, take on the professor's Pokedex quest, and buy myself some Pokeballs. Which means, my friends, the Nuzlocke is officially in full effect. The first thing I decided to do was track back the way towards the previous route so that I could find me another shiny team member. I ran around hoping for a Starly, but in my heart of hearts, I knew what was about to happen. And sure enough, it didn't take too long before- YO! What's happening? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Excuse me? What is this? I caught the Bidoof, chat urged me to name it God, and before making any more progress, I thought I should probably switch train it so it isn't quite as, well, useless. After making my way home to show my mum all of the cool hyperpigmented Pokemon I've found, she gives me a journal I'll never touch, and I could finally continue on my journey. However, before progressing, Dawn felt the need to teach me how to catch a wild Pokemon, and so I endured that for a while, even though I'm three steps ahead, and to be fair, for my patience, she did give me some extra balls, and for that, I'm grateful. But do you know what I'm not grateful for? The next count hours of my life that chat wanted me to waste hunting. I was ready to move on, but no, chat wanted me to be safe and catch another Pokemon. So I did what they asked of me because I am a man of the people, and since the gentle dude stream is a democratic union, I complied. It took a long time, sure, but boy was it worth it, because out of all of the Pokemon available to me on this route, one stood out by a country mile. And sure enough, with most hunts, with great patience comes great reward. This is- OH YO! YES! Oh, finally! Oh my god. See, the thing about this evil line is that it gets access to arguably the best ability in any Nuzlocke. Intimidate. Which is genuinely incredible if you get it. Which I didn't. Instead, Logan the Shinx got rivalry, which I mean, hey ho, we take what we're given, it is what it is. But with the literal cat in the bag, I decided that was a good place to go to sleep. Until the very next day when I hopped back on, but I could have never predicted what would go down because when going back to literally train the Shinx that we found the night before, we bumped into something else. I don't give the members it. Sorry? What? That's not what was... That... I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, what just happened? Now, here's why that was a massive bummer. Because Starly, although an incredibly viable Pokemon when it grows up, isn't allowed to be on the team because we're only allowed one Pokemon per route. And the route I was training Shinx on was the very same route that we found God the Bidoof. Which means Ethan the Starly has to go straight into the PC where it will spend the rest of its miserable, lonely, slightly brown life. But listen, out of sight, out of mind. I sprinted forth towards Jubilife where we met some creepy older gentleman named Looker, which as a name just multiplies his creepiness. Anyway, after getting my Pokemon to the appropriate levels, I walked east of Jubilife where I knew waiting 
thing for me would be Al Gore, prepped for combat. So with zero hesitation, we fought. He led a Starley and I led Ludwig. I wanted to use Ludwig to beat the Starley because the only other of his two team members is a starter Chimcha, where our turtle was honestly just useless. He brought in the Fire Monkey and I pivoted over to God who was able to get off some decent damage before I swap on over to Logan to see out the battle. Well, do you know what? All things considered, oh, we're fat, we're fat. Wait, we have a sped there, right? So, in theory, pow. Logan, let's go. Big dub. No cap. Anyway, so chat was jonesing for another shiny hunt before we progressed again, so I humoured them and went for it. In all honesty, I started by hunting the Magikarp, but realised the first gym was of the rock variety, and I might want a Pokemon better suited to not exclusively use the moves Splash and Tackle. And aptly, in the route above Jubilife, one of the possible encounters is a Budu, who would be perfect against the rock type gym. However, I'm Gentle Dude, and if you're not already aware, we don't often get what we want, and so in common Gentle Dude fashion... Ah! Okay. Listen, 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 it's okay, because um, even though it's not who we were looking for, it's who we got. Listen. It's fine because even though this is dupes, it's technically not dupes because the last Starly we caught was illegal since it was one mon per route. So I caught the Starly, named it Ethaniel to pay tribute to Ethan the Box Guardian, and continued on my path to Orberg. We made it, did all the story malarkey, and decided to start the next stream with yet another hunt. As you can imagine, I was pretty defeated since we'd literally already sunk about eight hours into this playthrough and we haven't even grazed the first gym yet. Anyway, above Orberg, there's a spot of grass where I could run back and forth relentlessly in a pool of Machop, Geodude, and Ponita mostly, until one decided to spot Sparkle for me, which, by the way, took its time. 100. Yes! Sick! What a shiny! That's such a good one! Oh, look at it! That's awesome! Lads, we found it! Yes! So we caught the pony, called him Michael, and hear me out here. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but this Pokemon is going into my Hall of Fame for what he pulls later off in this run. If you were there in the stream, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And so, after training my Pokemon, I figured, hey, it's probably time we pursue our first gym badge. And my friends, that's exactly what we did. I approached Rourke, and with my butt clenched, you're challenged by leader Rourke. Yes, I am. God outspeeds, and I opted for defense curl on turn one, while Rourke opted for the long game. They set up Stealth Rocks, and so from here, I wanted to to use Growl as much as I possibly could with my popcorn faced beaver. Once I'd lowered the Geodude's attack enough, I swapped over to Ludwig who took some chip damage from the stones, and a weak rock throw from Geodude before I opted to essentially click withdraw six times to raise Ludwig's defense to the moon. Ludwig has the move Absorb, which is quite effective against the rock ground Geodude, and so even though we'd taken a decent amount of damage, the move one shot and Ludwig was brought back up to full health. We're looking good. Onyx came in next, and off the rip, they outsped and used Screech to lower Ludwig's defense from plus six to plus four. Then we missed a Razor Leaf. Not ideal. Except Ludwig instantly made up for it. Oh my god. Oh, it's a crit. Ludwig. Amazing. Unreal. Fantastic. Granny Dose, i.e. Rourke's ace, was last. And this thing was terrifying. Except from the fact that our Ludwig is a beast. Granny Dose still has just physical attacks. It's lowering our defenses. So I think we're back to neutral defense. But I still think Ludwig solos. Bro! What? One potion. Ha ha ha. Easy peasy. Okay, that did a lot less, but it's okay because one more Razor Leaf kills. No flinch. No flinch. Nice, Ludwig! Nice. That's a dub. Huge dub. Rock goes down, we lose no one. This is embarrassing. I went and lost to a trainer who didn't even have a single gym badge. But that's tough. You were strong and I was weak. That's all there is. According to Pokemon League rules, I have to give you our gym badge since you've beaten me, the leader. Here's your official Pokemon League coal badge. Let's go! From Orberg to progress, we're gonna need to backtrack back over to Jube Life, where we're introduced to some bowl cut cyan wig wearing puppet people who go by the name Team Galactic. Neither of those people are even given names beyond Grunt. Which is like, in a world where you can become anything, why become a nameless cult follower, dress and act identically to literally everybody around you, and mass produce and wear blue wigs in an ideology of some guy that you think should own the planet? Regardless, Don and I wiped the floor with them, and I was granted access to progress onwards to the scent of nostalgia and shrubbery in the quaint town of Floroma. From here, it was chat's decision on whether or not we could keep going or whether they wanted to subject me to the torment of mother luck and try my hand at another shiny hunt. And just as one would expect, they threw me at a hunt that took hours. Practice. No! <laughs> oh, no. See, right. Can't complain. A shiny's a shiny. And we've been doing this for ages. For hours and hours and hours, right? But I've already got an electric type, man. Wasn't who I was looking for. But we can progress now. And it learns charm. So with specs acquired, I beat up some more of Cyrus's mindless followers before going back to train our Pokemon a little. And in doing so, we just so happened to strike gold. What? See what I'll do sometime. Yo! We weren't even hunting. Listen, I'll take it. Right, here's the thing. We can get Zubat in so many different caves. Getting a shiny Psyduck is not a bad thing at all. Having a water type on our team, not a bad thing at all. 
And listen, I knew that Orange Yielded was out here giving me a hand after that patch of Riso Hunt, but listen, I could not have predicted this. Why did you start your channel? Actually, do you know what's funny? I was unwell and I didn't know what to do. <gasps> Yo! We found it! We found the green super! Bro, that's huge! That's so good! Nice! Nice! Yes! Fish brain in hand, and before making any more major progress, I was well within my right to evolve Logan the Shinx into a Luxio. Then it was time to get moving. Now, sometimes as a partaker of the Nuzlocke challenge, you make mistakes. Your plan wasn't optimal, or you get knocked down a peg or two by Lady Luck, or whatever. But there's a rule that a lot of Nuzlockers preach constantly. Play around the crit. Now, I could tell you why that's important, but instead, I'm gonna show you. Children, don't be like me. The biggest early game run killer in this game is a Team Galactic admin named Mars, who has trespassed and forced dictated of the Valley Windworks. And listen, she's scary exclusively because of her level 17 Perogly, which can we just talk on for one second? Editor, do me a favor, Google what level Glamiao evolves into Perogly. So what voodoo did you partake in? What devil did you shake hands with? What lab did you pay to get a Perogly at level 17, bruh? We locked in and led Logan against Mars' Zubat, and that makes the first of our three Pokemon obsolete. One shot floored the bat, and her Perogly came in next. I swapped over to Ethaniel to get the Intimidate drop, then my idea was to use Growl to lower this thing's attack even farther. I got one off, but then the very next turn- AH! NO! Oh, Ethaniel, you weren't supposed to die. So, with Ethaniel in the mud, I brought Specs in. Specs has a move Charm, which harshly lowers an opponent's attack, and so after doing that, and sparking a few times for Chip, I pivoted over to Logan, who could comfortably see out the battle. But it was bittersweet. Ethaniel, our one mon with Intimidate, was in the grave. Ethaniel, my friend, you served as well. Thank you so much. You shouldn't have been crit. That was bogus. I got greedy. It was my fault. I'm sorry that you were in the hands of such a cabbage trainer. Goodbye. Triumph does not come without sacrifice, but we will come back stronger. In progressing, our starter Ludwig was now able to evolve into a grotto, making it even more of a wall. And as an added plus, look at that shiny! Yo, shiny grotto is so good. Progressing forth, we hit a huge roadblock that goes by the name of Eterna Forest. Now, Eterna Forest is an interesting place because we're forced to escort a damsel in distress who goes by Cheryl through said forest. Sounds romantic, right? Wrong! There are two things I hate about this specific forest in this specific run. Cheryl's awareness and chat's masochism. See, chat decided that they wanted to watch me gamble my sanity in the form of a shiny hunt. Now, every battle you find yourself in with Cheryl by your side is a double battle, meaning eventually this would happen. Oh, yo, that was so quick. Now, let me explain the position we were thrust into. Cheryl is about to randomly engage in fisticuffs with either of these two buddies at complete random. Chansey is six levels above Michael the Ponyta and is universally regarded as a thick Pokemon. And finally, I can't catch this shiny buddy unless I manage to not only knock out the other one first, but stop Cheryl from killing the shiny one. My plan of action was simple. Swap to Logan and target the Chansey. Please, please, no! Mm. Cheryl, please, bro. Nah, 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 Batman. Okay, please, please, please don't. Please don't. Please, please don't. Okay, okay. Para, please, para. Please, para. Please, para. Please, para. Please, para. Please, no, please, no. Cheryl! Bruh! Why? Why would you do that? Not only did we just involuntarily lose our Eterna Forest encounter, but to add insult to injury, some of these fights were interesting, to say the least. And listen, you'd think the Eterna Forest chaos would subdue right about here, but while I was literally walking through just trying to get out of this godforsaken death pit... What? What is this forest, bro? So we caught the Wurmple, which we also just aren't allowed to use, and finally made our way out from this stupid forest. Now, Eterna City is our salvation, but more so, Cynthia. She's my favorite. I want one. If you look like Cynthia, hit me up. If you don't... There's always cosplay. I went south of the city to talk to a lab rat who gave me the EXP share, which would be useful since we aren't using rare candies. PSA though, we changed our mind about the candies later in the run since it was boring for everyone just watching me run in circles, beating everything up to get like 147th closer to leveling up each time. For now though, massive past that, I met this city's gym leader Gardenia, and so after using Michael to absolutely steamroll through every trainer in this place, we trained our mons up a smidge and wasted no time before confronting the grass gym leader. She led our Turtwig and I led Michael. We outsped and a flame wheel literally almost O-code and the Turtwig set up reflect. We embered, they used Sunny Day, and we KO'd the lead. Next up was Cherim, who in the sun changed form. Anyway, Michael made light work of it, and Roseridae hit the field just to literally fall to one single attack. Michael swept. Two gym badges down, and I know exactly what comes next. Team Galactic. Usually, I'd accelerate Nose first into their lair and foil their plans, but after last time, I'm not so confident. Regardless, I beat the ever-living bejeebus out of all of the grunts on my way up to where the big bad Saturn was doing something naughty. Not entirely sure what she's doing, but we're here to stop her nonetheless. I engaged in the battle 
battle. By this point, it was past midnight, but I was too riled up to not fight her. So now the game was afoot. She led a Zubat who Logan was able to one-shot without any qualms. Then came the Skun Tank. And this thing is a menace. Off the rip, I wanted to chance the Spark Para, so I clicked it, but before Logan could even attack... No crits. No crits. That wasn't a crit! Yeah, no, this was an M60 pattern battle tank in the form of a cat. Skunk thing. I knew it hit hard, but I had absolutely no idea just how hard it would hit. So in my head, I fully was not aware what the plan could even be from here. I knew that I had to swap over to Specs to take a hit and do a little chip, but ultimately, Specs had to go down here. Her death will not be in vain, though. The clean switch allows me to bring Michael in and play with fate. Here's my game plan, right? Free switch. Now, do we stop- Wait, no, because if we don't outspeed, the stomp isn't worth it. Grill could be a play as well. No, we want the burn. We need the burn. We need the burn. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Come on! That's massive! Right, and we outspeed, so now we stomp because it can flinch. Michael, I love you so much. You've got no idea. Oh, my clutch! Oh, my god! Let's go, bro! Double flinch, man! Oh, Orange Shielded, you have my bat. Oh! Saturn fell and we were looking and feeling good. Triumphant. Confident. It's at this point in the game where Cynthia, my wife in shining armor, offers us an egg. And both chat and I knew exactly what to do with it. Remember how we hunted for the Turtwig at the beginning? Well, that same technique applies to any and all static or gift Pokemon that we can receive on this journey. And so, after a decent amount of soft resetting, hatching eggs, and checking what's inside, one would inevitably have the subtlest of differences that make for Togepi's shiny. It was incredibly... This one looks... Is this one shiny? Wait, real quick. Is this it? <laughs> so and I thought, wait a second, that looks a little bit different. That's so strange. Yo, we got it. With shiny Zui in hand, I snagged myself a bicycle and made my way down cycling road with no issues whatsoever. Now, the next hunt was going to be interesting for a plethora of reasons. The location of said hunt was in a very specific hidden cave located directly under the cycle track. But the more interesting part of this hunt was the encounter pool. Because you see, my friends, in Wayward Cave are Zubat, Geodude, Onyx, Bronzor, and the diamond that we're hoping to strike in Gibble. The pseudo in this game and one of the early dragons that we can find. But the issue is Gibble and Gabite have very specific spawns, so to even get one will be so incredibly lucky, never mind this early. Regardless, chat opted to test our luck and shoot for the moon, and I know that Gibble's a rare encounter, so I could have never expected to find the shiny, but I would never have predicted that just 343 encounters in, I'd find... No! Okay. That's not what we wanted! 40 minutes for this! 40 minutes for this... Thing is not what I want. That's not how this was supposed to go. I was supposed to get a shiny gibble. That was what was supposed to happen. Yup! Onyx, objectively the worst Pokemon that I could have gotten. That sucked because that pretty much ensured that Garchomp wasn't going to be on the cards. And even if I was to find one, it would be deep into this run. And as a consolation prize, I have a pea snake. Tremendous, remarkable, outstanding, phenomenal synonyms. Anyway, after my over-the-top catastrophizing of the situation that I was in, I emerged from the cave, immediately put Peacenake in the PC, and continued on my journey. I fought a few people, found a cave, met a cult leader, left the cave, fought some more people, and while I was doing that, something hilarious happened. Yeah, it's we. Yo! <laughs> From unlucky, my guy! The male combi! Shiny male combi, the 1 in 500! What on earth am I looking at? Get smacked! <laughs> oh, that sucks. So apparently random NPCs can have shinies as well. I love that. It's inclusive. But speaking of shinies, we want to see and catch as many as we can. And so chat again decided to stop here and hunt in the grass, which I'm here for because I'm objectively bad at Pokemon. And the more diverse mons we have access to, the less chance I'll have to fumble the bag. However, I was about twice over odds before something finally sparkled. But, um, so I didn't really have my lunch. <gasps> no! Oh! No! An hour and a half, bro. An hour and a half we've been running around for this. So I caught the bee barrel, named it Frantic, but of course Frantic was dupes, so straight to the box with that. However, I could have never predicted that just a few encounters later, we'd get lucky again. I'm going to continue while you guys are voting. So if you want to have a say in what's... Yo! What? We just started a poll to see if we should keep hunting. <laughs> what? How? 
That's nuts. We've been hunting for like the best part of two hours trying to find something. Trying to find anything. And we got the bee barrel. And like three seconds later, maybe, maybe, maybe five encounters after the bee barrel, we got another shiny. Oh my god. That's insane. Finally, I could leave this godforsaken patch of grass. But chat hates me. We know this. That isn't open to debate. All they ever want to do is watch me torment myself with shiny hunts. However, I will say this one would be interesting. In Heart Home, there is a kind lady who gifts you an Eevee. So as you might assume, it was time to get to soft resetting for the rest of the stream. But an hour later, we were greeted with this. And I'll have a shiny hoodie, so- YO! YO! Mox! In the bag, bro! Four shinies a stream, that's nuts! That's insane! Let's go! So with Mox in the bag, I tracked back towards Orberg where, um... Ah! No! So that was scuffed. In Heart Home, we bumped into Mom, spun a gym leader, evolved Fish Brain all the way up into a crowbar, absolutely obliterated our way through the Heart Home gym, and finally, it was about time that we compete for our next gym badge. Fantina, let's do this. She leads her Duskull, and I opted for Logan. Off the rip, we outsped, used Bite, and landed a turn one flinch, meaning we take exactly zero points of damage before using another Bite to KO the Ghosty. Fantina's next Pokemon is Haunter, and so I pivoted to Mox the Eevee, because Haunter's only attacking moves are of the Ghost variety, or Sucker Punch, which won't affect our pretty little normal type, so long as I don't opt to attack. Mox was comfortably able to get six sand attacks off, only taking self-inflicted confusion damage in the process. And so, once I'd gotten all of the sand attacks off, I thought it's smart to also use Growl to negate this thing even farther and waste more of its hypnosis PP before swapping on over to Harper's the Roselia. Now, Harper's was able to set up a Leech Seed, and then I opted to swap again over to Fishbrain the Albino Crobat against this poor, paralyzed, weak, and blind Haunter. We swiftly put it out of his misery, and finally we were faced with Fantina's Miss Magius. On its first First turn on the field, I opted to pluck to steal this thing's held citrus berry, and then since we got confused that turn, I figured we should swap. So I opted for Michael, we took a hit, then got confused, then hit ourselves, and so I swapped again. This time to Ludwig, who took an incredibly painful shadow ball. Another would have killed, and so I swapped back into Fishbrain, who absolutely needed to come through for us. See if this doesn't kill, then we lose Fishbrain, but we've got no other option. Please, 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 yeah! I think that mattered, bro. I think the crit mattered genuinely. Oh my god. Okay, well that my I uh, yep, that was fun. Okay, well, that was Yep. Straight out the Fantina fight, we healed up, sprinted east, and prepared ourselves for the next challenge. Al Gore. Mr. Rhythm. Let's kiss. I mean fight. I mean kiss. Man led a star avia. We took a quick attack, landed a spark that did crazy damage, but Al Gore had strats. It is. Don't endeavor me! Ah! Uh, wait, Endeavor is the one that does more. It's cool. Logan killed the bird and Buiza was in next, which was fine because I could swap over to Ludwig to eat the crit quick attack, then a weak pursuit before very, very, very almost all coing the beaver. Again, it's cool. We kill it, then Monferno comes in. I brought in Michael to take a hit, then use one stomp before swapping out for Fishbrain to a weak quad resisted Mach Punch. Then Fishbrain could pluck the monkey, then another pluck on Al Gore's final Pokemon, Roselia, was all it took to steal the battle. That was comedy. Al Gore has nothing on me. Hey, Al Gore, your life coach called. He said he didn't make the team. Anyway, progressing forward, it was time to make absolutely no progress forward because this was about to be the most tedious hunt of the entire run so far. It gets worse later, but since we hadn't experienced this level of tomfoolery in the run yet, I assumed this would be as difficult as it could get. I fully dedicated the rest of this stream to fishing and not one single goldfish would sparkle. Beyond that, it took over an hour and a half into the next stream for the Pokemon to show. I went more than triple over odds for this thing, but boy was it worth the wait. <gasps> yes! Jeez! Ah! Oh, Yo, let's Go! We called the carp cheese and continued on our merry way, battling our way through Solaceon up towards the next route where we floored our way through everyone without a problem, bringing us to Veilstone. I headed towards the gym and Don was there awaiting me. We exchanged a harmless flirt, got interrupted by a topless wrestler, and finally we could start to make our way through this gym challenge. This puzzle was actually super nostalgic for me, and past that I was pretty easily able to knock out all the Taekwondoers and their Pokemon. And not only that, but our sparkly fish is about to become infinitely more useful, since with the XP share taken on in the background, we were able to surpass the level required for an evolution. And now Cheese was a force to be reckoned with, and past that, now has the ability to intimidate, which was absolutely huge. So, moving on, it was time to train up and beat all the trainers before taking on Maylene, and in the process, something ridiculous happened. <laughs> Yo! We were just talking about it! We were just saying, look at the pinkness, so pink on my screen. 
We were just saying. That's crazy. Well, prepare to die. So now here I'm stood with underleveled Pokemon, and I'm not gonna lie to you, this is where probably the worst chain of events in my entire Pokemon career transpired. You see, objectively one of the best and subjectively one of my favorite Pokemon on the team is Fishbrain the Crobat. And listen, I can absolutely see why most Nuzlockers use rare candies because training is just so tedious and frankly boring. And when doing it, one might get a little distracted or complacent and um bad things might happen. Okay, so there are giraffe rig here. Good to know. I should actually probably leech life. Ah! No! No! What the hell am I doing? Oh! No! Oh my god! So I lay our best team member to rest. The one who, by the way, was without a remote doubt our best shot against Maylene to an entirely avoidable non-shiny wild Pokemon. All because I was training. But hey, one door closes, another opens. I evolved Logan from Loxio to Loxray, and with my heart in my hands, we continued training, which went very smoothly with no issues. Oh, no. It's my fault. What? Ludwig, why? <gasps> Ludwig, why? So since I was genuinely terrified of the Maylene fight without our Crobat, which again was just so, so good against specifically her, I decided to procrastinate some more and go hunt for another Pokemon. In the same cave we bumped into Cyrus earlier, we could find a bunch of Pokemon who would be useful for the fight, but instead of any of those, we got, well. So the thing is, right, we can get Chingling, which would suck in terms of it being a good Pokemon for the Nuzlocke. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's not helpful, but it is a Geodude. And since Geodude didn't exactly quash my anxiety towards progressing, I decided to continue with our procrastination and hunt east of Eterna, where I could find a Meditate or a Bronzong or none of the ones that I was looking for. Sick. It seems no Rotom form change. Okay, well. Oh, yo, that's a Shiny Machop. That's a Shiny Machop. I mean, uh, that's, that's a Shiny Machop. That's, yep. That's what that is. And then someone in chat came up with just an extraordinary plan because when it comes to finding the shinies I want, let's be real, it's never gonna happen. So we made our way to the old chateau because interestingly, if you find the room with the TV inside, there resides a static Rotom. Wait, it's actually a, a static, static Rotom because it lives in the static in the TV, right? That's, that's sick. Okay, so the idea here is to save in front of the old timey television and soft reset the game as many times as it would take for the static, static to sparkle. And after a few grueling hours of hunting, we were presented with our prize. Should I finish Teal Mask before Indigo Disc? I believe you have to finish it. <gasps> Yo! Shiny Rotom! Oh, it's so good in this game. That's a great shiny. Oh my god. That is a beautiful shiny. Wow. You are absolutely stunning. And listen, it might be overkill, but to finish off this stream, I went to yet another route that I hadn't shiny hunted in and spent the remainder of the stream looking for a hint of a sparkle until finally our last one before Maylene would reveal itself. What do you guys think? Should we keep shiny hunting or should we go and try and find a tactic to beat up Maylene? <gasps> Yo! Never mind! It sparkled as soon as- That's poetic. So at this point in the game, I was as ready as I was gonna be. The fish brain death was honestly a momentous confidence hit, but I couldn't put it off forever. Oh, and uh, I turned off battle animations to train and I forgot to turn them back on, so you're gonna have to bear with. Anyway, I led Logan the Luxury. There is nothing this thing has that can one, one tap, so we click spark and hope for a para. Oh, that's gonna happen. Thanks for that. Okay, now we para. Oh no, I've not got battle animations on, because we were training. Ah! Ah! So straight up from here, I was instantly riddled with anxiety. The instant drain punch crit meant that another hit from Logan would not kill the onion head, and so I swapped over to cheese the Gyarados for the intimidate drop. Right, so that was intimidate. Can you stop, bruv? Can you chill with your pure power crits? What's your issue, man? Right, freeze. I deserve it after this RNG that you've got. No, 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 no. Okay, we're chilling. Uh, we've got. Okay, that proc the orange berry, which means we're fine. We ice fang it dies. Machoke hit the field, so I pivoted over to Harper's. Oh, it missed. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can leech seed for sure. It evaded the attack, and now it's getting pumped. It evaded the attack, and then missed a rock tube. What's going on? Okay, finally it was seeded. See, without battle animations, this is... Oh! Why is everything critting? Why is everything critting? Why is everything critting? <gasps> it's got guts. I shouldn't have done that. It's got guts. Okay. So at this point, I was pretty terrified. With the poison on Machoke, guts was activated, making this thing infinitely more scary. So I swapped to Roman, used Reflect, and essentially watched Machoke die to Leech Seed and Poison Chip. Finally, Maylene brought in her Lucario. Bone Rush could not hit Roman because of his ability, and so I was really just playing with RNG. I'm gonna harm this one. It has to Metal Claw. That's the only move that it can use. Okay, okay, that was a crit. I was gonna say that that does a lot, but that's a crit. I kinda, I'm gonna double team again. No miss. Oh my god. God. Okay, 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 okay. It's missing. The reflect wore off, so I'm gonna use it again. 
Why? What's going on? Bro? I can't stay in, can I? No, I want to switch. Do you know what I want to do? I really want to go into cheese. If cheese gets crit, cheese gets crit. Listen, this is what's going to happen. I want the attack drop here, right? Intimidate attack drop. No crits. Good. I think from this range, earthquake kills. I'm going Ludwig. Okay, here's what's going to happen. We'll get force palm, no para. Beautiful. Quick claw. Oh my god! Oh my god, okay. That was stupid. We got crit so many times, but So with the fabled badge in pocket, I headed north of the city to where Don was waiting for me to join her in the eloquent dance of battle. We nanied our way through the grunts, and then, upon making my way to Pastoria City to trespass on Crash Awake's domain, I was ambushed by Al Gore. There's this gem. Is this Crash Awake's gem? Don't do it. Don't do it. I said don't do it, bruv! Luckily, though, Mr. Idham led a bird, and I just so happened to have Logan up front. Turn one, we took a quick attack, then a single spark oko the Staravia, baiting in Buizo. We took a crit aqua jet but oko that as well before opting to swap over to cheese who took two hits and i had cheese use dragon rage a couple of times to floor the monkey the final pokemon was roselia who i swapped to michael on we took a hit then flame wield and the rosebud fell to his death the ambush was not successful i beat the battle and then i realized there was a cult member just staring at a tree so i went to talk to them girl the package hasn't arrived yet i have to wait here till then <sighs> oh man i wish i could do something that involved lots of explosives um, so I'm just supposed to ignore that terrorist attack threat. Now it was time to go into the Great Marsh to try and find ourselves a shiny, which is an interesting play because shinies in the Great Marsh are objectively a dumb idea. You'll see exactly why in a second. But we chose an area, made our way there, ran back and forth for an obscenely short amount of time and ran into this. Yo! Yo! <laughs> Whoa! That was so quick! That was the fastest shiny hunt yet. That was easily the fastest. Oh my god, bruv. Okay, how do I catch it though? I've got a question. How do I make it not run away? It's random, so throw a ball. One. Ah. ah! Please don't do it! Please don't do it! Please don't do it! Please don't. Okay. Please, 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 please don't run! Don't run! Oh my god! Get in the ball, bro! Get in the ball! Please stop! Oh my god! Please! Oh, please, 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 please! Just get in the ball, bro! Just get in the ball! Just one time! Just get in the ball! Just, just once! That's all I need! Stop! Oh my god! Tangle! Get the ball! You're giving me anxiety! Oh my god! My intestines look like you! One, two, three! Please! Please! I said please! Oh my god! Please! Don't do it! <laughs> so knowing that chat would want me to pick up another friend, I went to an area we hadn't found anyone yet to try and find a Krogunk, and after running around for an ungodly amount of time against all odds, we found a- I don't watch it. Ah! Okay, okay. Listen. What? Excuse me! Why? The guys, this isn't a- this isn't a woo moment. Shellos is a dupe. I would be extremely happy with this if I hadn't already got one. So, whatever. I continued hunting, and after a long time losing brain cells, another Pokemon showed up. Let's take on Crash Awake as well. If we feel if we feel confident, then we'll go and beat Crash Awake as well. <gasps> Yo! Purple Quagsire! I was just saying, because it wasn't happening. I was fully just like, oh yeah, we're not going to find it, so I'm going to go, Yo! So after acquiring one pink goober, it was time to use Logan and Harper's to absolutely make a mockery of the gym trainers in Wake's gym. And with a glimmer in my eye, a spring in my step, and a firmly clenched buttocks, it was time to approach the podium and press A on Scary Gym Leader Man. Wake is Gyarados against Logan the Luxury. Now, we're four levels above and one quad effective spark outspeeds and one shots. Quagsire comes in next, so I opted to pivot over to Ludwig, who ate a yummy mud shot and quad effective mega drained, but that just missed out on the kill. And so in retaliation, Wake opted to use Yawn. I swapped on back to Cheese and Wake healed up, so now I could go back to Ludwig. We giga drained and the Quagsire survived on 0.5 HP. My camera then froze and we got hit by a water pulse, which is completely fine so long as it doesn't confuse. Okay, sick. Ludwig broke through and used one more mega drain to kill Quag, and once Flo Floatso hit the field, I fixed my janky ass camera and swapped over to Cheese who got the Intimidate drop. Floatso instantly landed an Ice Fine crit, which is just not fun. And so now I wanted to pivot on over to Logan who takes a crunch which doesn't do a lot. Then we take a Brain which actually doesn't do too much and we retaliate with a spark that absolutely kills the Water Fox. Floatso fell and on that note, the gym badge was ours. I was confident. I was swimming through the game and things were looking up from our downfalls. The deaths, the failed shinies, the dupes and the countless hours of game time sunk into this attempt. But it wouldn't be for nothing. For we must press on towards our salvation. But we were interrupted by Al Gore just outside of the gym who tattled on the guy who wanted to explode Pastoria or whatever and in a steroid induced fit of rage, Crash Awake sprinted head first after the naughty bowl cut person. So we met with Master Wake, Al Gore got offended that we left him out, then something exploded and the blue hair person ran off east and they left me to pursue them alone. Which I did. I Usain bolted my way up to the grunt but they duped me and ran off so I Deoxys speed formed my way to them again and they got away again. And then before I could catch them again, Luca decided to distract me from the pro. Whose side are you even on bruv? After doing that two more times, running at Mach 2 speed, the grunt finally stopped and we engaged in some fisticuffs, which I, of course, bested them in. And after they left, all puffed out and sweaty and embarrassed, I was approached by my queen, Cynthia. Hey, you, um, you see me battling? 
I bet you're impressed. Go away, bruv! Can't you see I'm flirting? Let me flirt in peace. What sort of friend even are you? Whatever. The moment was ruined. Cynthia handed me some medicine to treat a group of collectively unwell Psyduck, and so after doing just that, we ventured into the fog, ran around for the best part of two hours trying to get a usable and viable mon, when we were met with this. Ethan donated $200, and Bro's boy donated 100 Like, bruv! Yo, shit is well now! What? What's happening? What's happening? What the fuck? Yo! Oh my god, the, the, the events that are transpiring right now! Before we knew it, we found ourselves in a quaint little village called Celestic Town, and there wasn't really much to this spot beyond the ruins, but that's exactly where we needed to be. I was studying the caveman-esque drawings when a grandma came up to try our luck with a young and handsome stallion, and mid-res, Cyrus rudely came through, shouted a bunch of aggressive gibberish, and it was time to put him in his place. Man led his Sneasel and I led Michael. Off the rip, a flame wheel almost killed, we took a hit and Cyrus healed, just to take another. We get a higher roll and the burn, so the Sneasel fell at the end of the turn. Go back, hit the field, I pivoted to Logan, Logan got confused, and I pivoted to and fro through Ludwig and Logan took a weak hit back in on the switch before obliterating the Gobat, and his final mon was a Murkrow, which we absolutely floored to wrap the battle. Cynthia was awaiting me outside the cave, we probably kissed, I probably stole a lock of her hair, and I was probably dreaming. Anyway, our next stream commenced with a little tracking back to track forward, and with a hop, skip, and a jump, we found ourselves in a new route, where we would inevitably be searching for our next team member, or PC dweller, depending on how unlucky we get. Yo! Shiny Chatot, that's not dupes. We take those. Every day of the week, we take those. We take those. Dubs. Big dub. No cap. Ooh. Whoa. With the parrot acquired, I made my way west towards Canaleve, and who else to ruin my day but Mr. Algorithm? This sounds like he's gonna battle me, and I don't like that because I'm not prepared. Well, that sucks. Regardless, I had Michael out front, and so I opted to pivot straight through to Roman on a double team. Off the rip here, I wanted to click reflect, and Staraptor went for another double team, so I opted to follow suit. We can play this. We can play this game. Absolutely, we can play this game. Oh, yeah, because Shockwave doesn't miss. You don't realize what you're doing. Algorithm thinks he's clever. He thinks he's clever, bro. This is easy. Look, they call me a cabbage. Look at this guy. This is this is Algorithm's fault. Giving me a free win. Thank you. I guess you also have a move that doesn't miss. So, I mean, whatever. I opted to reflect again when ours ran out, then used Shockwave to kill the birdie. Floatzel was next to hit the field, and the Floatzel instantly missed before taking a Shockwave that o code meaning that next up was the Heracross. And I continued the Shockwave spam to do just about a third of this thing's health bar. And so, after that, I could use Ominous Wind a couple of times before... I don't know if you guys just saw my arms flail. <laughs> Without speed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Infernape was next in, so I swapped over to Michael, who took another aerial ace on the switch. Michael outspeeds the Infernape and used Stomp, but took a mad brick break in retaliation. And I really didn't like what I was looking at. And, um. Oh my god. Right, okay, here's the play. We want the intimidate. I'm committing to this plan. I'm committing to this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's going to use Aerial Ace because it doesn't miss, I believe. By the way, Luxray doesn't have Intimidate. Luxray got Rivalry, which is good here because it's the same level. It's the same gender. We take a Flame Wheel. Fine, as long as we don't get burned. Wait, that is re- Oh my god, it does so much. If we outspeed, this is the play. Oh my god, we don't outspeed. Please don't hurt me. Please don't kill me. Please, 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 Logan. No, 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 no. Okay, we're good. We're good. Citrus Berry, right? Citrus? Okay. I still don't want to take another hit though. Please. Damn it. Okay, um, listen, here's what I'm going to do. Please heal. Please heal. Please just heal. Just heal. Just heal. You didn't heal. Why didn't you heal? You don't heal. How much does this do? That wasn't a crit! Okay. Artemis has to die. Oh. <laughs> Blaze is active. Blaze is active! I thought he was gonna freaking heal. You guys made me think. I blame you. I blame chat. Listen, okay, Artemis dies. I'm sorry. This is the only way that we can survive this. Is Artemis dying? Artemis has to die here. Bro, this isn't even his last Pokemon. Bye. Cool. Bye, Artemis. Okay. That had to happen, I'm so sorry. Artemis, I apologize, dude. Who's Michael outsped it, right? Bro, 95. I need Ponyta to outspeed. It's the only it's the only thing that I can think. I can't remember if Ponyta outsped before. I'm just clicking it. I'm just clicking it. Oh my god, please kill. Oh, oh my soul. Oh our team was so on the ropes, but I had to try and make it out somehow. I clicked flame wheel and Please, 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 or something. Please, 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 please. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Another death in the books. Great. But do you know what is actually great? The next level cap. Because it means that we can take our people's champion, Michael, and evolve it from a blue flame pony into the most elegant, smoky unicorn without wings anyone ever did see. Wait, does a unicorn have wings? No, that's a Pegasus. What am I talking about? Good shift, my friend. Thank you so much for your 
input. You've been absolutely monumental. Guys, say hello to the new Michael. God, I love that shit. Now, all is good and well, but uh, before you watch the next part, I, I want to preemptively apologize for my cabadry because, um, you see... The next place I wanted to grace was a sweet embrace of the Iron Caves, for therein lies a double battle that we can avoid with brains. But see, my friends, we were too hasty, hoping we could pass through safely. Killed the bunny, but you see, Lucario fell easily. Which, like, why, why do you only have one Pokemon? Get it together, bruv. <clears throat> At this point, I decided that an earthquake could be our best chance at flooring these two mons we see, and Ludwig did it speedily. The problem here was that they ran a Raptor and a Medicham. I don't want to rhyme anymore, so I'm going to stop that now. Ludwig took a hard aerial release and then a high jump kick before shooting for a single target EQ that really did not do enough damage. I knew I had to swap over to Cheese to take the next hits, but even then, the aerial release high jump kick combo did over half, and I knew that someone was about to die. To add to the panic, I only had five Pokemon in the party because we needed a party slot to accept the egg at the end of the tunnel, aka the only reason why we're here. I knew I had to stay in with cheese, and so... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Mm. Now, I brought Logan to spark the Staraptor, and that kills, but that's where I realized... There's more, bruv! Oh, there's more! There's more. Oh my god, no way! I think we wipe? Well, listen, I don't see a universe in which we don't wipe here. Okay, listen. Oh, we've got the magnet. We outspeed. We need to get- Please, please, please kill. Please kill. Please kill. Please kill. Please kill. Please pa! Mm! Why? Why? No, bruv, no. Oh my god, do we wipe here? Oh, Logan, cheese. That's too- Oh, oh my god, bro, my Intimidate user and, and Logan. Oh my god. This is- this is so not fair. Ludwig out speeds a Hopopotas, right? Oh my god, this is so terrifying. Ground isn't very effective on grass. Ground is not very effective on grass, and I know this is a fact. Do we outspeed or do we not outspeed? Listen, we outspeed. Do we click Synthesis or do we click Mega Drain? Do we click- Oh my god, this sucks. Oh, <laughs> Logan, no. We need to Mega Drain. We need to Mega Drain. No, do we? Do we- sin Oh my god. Okay, we outspeed. Please, please do lots. Please. Okay. What's next? Oh. <laughs> So with the absolute worst case scenario, losing Luxury and Gyarados as my reality, I reluctantly pressed forward, floored the grunts, and went to claim my prize. A soft reset literally a handful of times before RNG Odoo decided to throw me a bone. And so it's one of these- What? Yo! <laughs> what? Oh my god, bruv! That was- that was so quick! So I evolved Zweet into a Togetic, which actually birthed a really interesting dilemma. Because within our Rolodex of Pokemon, we have a Shiny Roselia and we have a Shiny Togetic. Both of which evolved via Shiny Stone, and the issue with that is that we only have one Shiny Stone. The other you get later on in the game, so we had a decision to make. Roserade or Togekiss? Before making that decision, I decided that I should leave to take on Mr. Byron, because in reality, Togekiss and Roserade were both pretty trivial for this specific fight. So with zero hesitation, I took Lizard the Quagsire, Ryan the Lucario, Mox the Umbreon, Ludwig the Torterra, Zui the Togetic, and Michael the Rapidash, and it's actually just dawned on me that I missed a bunch of these evolutions, but, um, listen, looking through two entire months worth of stream footage was not easy. Especially while writing a script the size of a novel, so cut me some slack. Anyway, it was Byron time. We win these, okay? We win these. We just need to be careful and careful, okay? And the reason I say careful twice is because I'm gentle, dude, and I'm a cabbage, so we need to be, say it with me, careful, okay? The Byron fight commenced with Magneton versus Lizard, and we took a try attack off the rip, and we didn't get powered or frozen or burned, which is a dub. An EQ then absolutely decimated the magnet cluster before Byron brought in his Steelix. I stayed in, outsped, and an EQ did a decent chunk before we took one in return. But since we had the Citrus Berry equipped, we were in a solid spot. We EQ'd again, and it crit. The Quagsire was going in. Bastiodon was next, and the EQ was quite effective, so it's a no-brainer, correct? I believe, since we've not been lowered at all, we don't one shot. It's quite effective, we might. I mean, I know it's- listen, it's got a sturdy, but Gen 4 sturdy is good in our favor. Gen 4 sturdy means that you son of a cabbage wait what it's got wait did that just organically put it to 1hp because it didn't it didn't activate sturdy <gasps> we're dead we're dead bye bye felicia bye 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 that sucked did, was that sturdy because it didn't say st okay well lizard's dead Ludwig came in and a single EQ from the Earth Turtle sent this freaking bastiodon back from whence it came. The badge was ours, but not without peril. Straight out the gym, the Professor, Don, and Al Gore wanted to have a meeting, so I humoured it, something exploded, and we were told to make our rounds to the Sinnoh Lakes. Things were heating up now. It was starting to feel like the late game. That was late, by the way, with a T, not with a K, because I know we're doing the late stuff, but I meant like late game, like we're, we're, we're in the 
Never mind. So long story short, my lovely Pokemon and I made our way to Lake 1, absolutely wiped the floor with Saturn, and then to Lake 2 where we wiped the floor with Mars. We've come a long way. I'm proud of us. Now, on our trail towards the northern lake of Acuity and our final gym badge of Snowpoint City, I stopped to do a spot of shiny hunting. It took a little more than a little while, but listen, it's fine. We did find a shiny. Yo! Sneasel! Oh my god, my heart! So with the bipedal cat Ouroboros in the bag, we could progress forth towards destiny. Now, can we just pause here a sec while I explain myself? Because I, um, listen, I was incredibly unwell during this stream, but when I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. And in the previous stream, I said that I'd be live, which turned out to be a pretty catastrophic mistake. Just, listen, all sevens in the chat for what you're about to watch is the dumbest, most inexplicable, unwarranted, silly death I'll ever have in a Nuzlocke. I watch a lot of good content, so... When I make content, I try to follow suit and make better content. Is this going to kill me? Is, is Torterra dead? Because if so, I'm going to end the stream and cry. I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. No! I was joking. I was joking. I was only joking. I was only joking. I was only joking. I shouldn't be streaming. I shouldn't be streaming. I shouldn't be live. I shouldn't be here. I'm not well. This is not okay. Why didn't I just switch to Michael, dude? Why did I even think that I should do that? I'm like, what's... Am I? Oh. By the way, this guy, the guy that just made that mistake, got nominated for Rising PokeTuber of the Year. The guy who just completely avoidably lost a shiny Torterra to a random trainer in the most obvious chain of events ever. But listen, I'm human. We're all, we're all human, and humans are like 60% water, so if you think about it, we're all just cucumbers with anxiety. Anyway, right, I kept on keeping on, braved my way through blizzards, and eventually landed at Snowpoint, where I decided my last feat of this stream would be the trainers in the gym. Because that would be easy breezy. Nothing bad could happen, and I could easily make my way through. I won't die. Wait, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this again? Why am I, why am I risking stuff? Kill. Please kill. That doesn't kill. We're gonna die now. Oh my god, we're gonna die now! No, 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 no,
We wipe. We actually just wipe. So at this point, chat really didn't understand what I was going for. They were just like, kill the Sneasel, you outspeed. I, you, I know, I know we outspeed. I know we outspeed. That's not the issue. It's the fact that there's a Crobat and a Haunch Crow that we cannot kill with one attack. And this thing is negative six accuracy right now. It's not this thing that's the problem. You guys don't realize I'm using the Sneasel to set up. The Sneasel needs to stay alive because it's at negative six accuracy. This is our only chance to set up. The Crobat has Air Cutter, which is super effective on Cole and Harpers. It has Bite, which is super effective on Roman. It has Poison Fang, which is, I think, neutral on Harpers, actually. And it's got Supersonic. And it outspeeds probably everyone except from Ouroboros. Ouroboros cannot kill it in one. I think we have to sack Ouroboros, but go down swinging. This is what I'm going to do. I should have... Swap. So I swapped to Zwei in a last ditch setup attempt because sure we were weak to the ice punch this thing wields But if Zwei can use charm three times the Sneasel only has physical attacks And so in the most runaround way possible we made it work I brought in Harpers to set up Leech Seed then pivoted to Roman to cross our fingers and hope to god that we get just decent RNG After setting up a reflect to even farther negate the Sneasel I had Roman set up double teams literally until Sneasel died All of that so that Roman would have as much HP as possible going into the rest of the fight And so here we are Haunch Crow hit the field Roman used the discharge that literally awkward and finally the crowback came in but that's when it happened no crits no flinch no flinch no flinch no flinch bro oh it was over if we just didn't flinch why did it land on plus five evasiveness bro oh i'm risking it i'm risking it i'm risking it i'm risking it oh my god it confused please just break through roman please just break through please 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 break through please 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 Please, Roman, please, 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 please. Roman, bruv, why? I brought in Zwei, who was able to exchange hits with the Crobat until we managed to proc the 10% Omni boost from Ancient Power. Meaning that even though Cyrus heals, we hit another, take one more non crit, and landed a final Ancient Power that killed. I hated everything about that. I can't believe that just happened. That battle. How did no one die, bruv? <gasps> no one died. What on earth was that? That was the most ludicrous thing that I've ever encountered in my entire life. Oh, RNG was not on my side there. I don't know what I've done to displease him, but he is mad at me. Good lord. That was so painful, bro. I didn't like that at all. My stomach is in my stomach. Now, um, th this is where I made another colossal mistake because I, I thought it was over and I went to release the lake spirits and little did I know I was about to get jump scared because when I was talking to Saturn... Wait, no! There's another battle! But hey, at least Saturn was a smidge more forgiving than Cyrus, right? The Goldbat used Confusery, but Mox broke through and landed a faint attack. The next turn we get pro strutted and Saturn switches over to Toxicroak on another now resisted faint attack. And, uh, looking at my team, I, I don't like what I'm seeing. Everyone's on the ropes. We actually can't win this. <gasps> no! The run's over because I clicked a freaking button. I can't believe this. My Pokemon aren't freaking healed. I just bought healing items. I didn't think there was another battle, bro. I thought they just let me press the freaking button. So listen, I swapped over to Cole, who took a brick break on the switch. They did a pretty crazy amount of damage. And then following that, Cole took a poison jab that brought him super low and poisoned. So Cole falls, which in this position was my plan. I had to be surgical with this. And knowing that without trades, I was never going to get my hands on him a champ, Cole was the most expendable. But my only real answer that didn't involve losing anyone else relied on Zui outspeeding. And that's where I blundered again. If we outspeed, it dies. I'm trying it. Cole, I'm trusting you, go. Oh, I don't want Zui to die. No! Bruv, no! I just didn't outspeed. And funnily enough, in this position, a regular Zui at level 49 would outspeed the Toxic Rogue, but ours was a down in speed nature, which I just didn't factor. So. That's fun. I brought in Harpers to Giga Drain, but then Toxic Rogue eats a Citrus Berry, bringing its HP back up, then lands a Poison Jab that does just under half. We use Giga Drain, then avoid a crit, and one more G-Drain kills, but it's not enough to warrant staying in. So I brought Mox back in, who was able to whittle the Golbat down with Faint Attack, which then eventually killed and baited Bronzor. It has to be Mox. We can't switch. We outspeed, we Faint Attack, it doesn't kill, but it does decent damage. Mox goes down. Mox dies. Not this turn, but the next one, I think. Wait, wait, wait. Is Mox gonna survive this? Please. Mox might survive this fight. <gasps> Mox, please, please pull through. 34, 24. Mox, please, please, please pull through, Mox. Please, 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 please. Mox, I don't want you to die. Survive. Survive one, no crits. We're chilling. 24, 14. <gasps> Mox! Okay. Mox, bro. Mox survives. Bro, I thought we we're gonna lose Mox as well. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my god, it's over. Get out, get out of here. I don't, I don't like this one bit. Bro, if we just healed, no one dies. If I knew that that bat was coming, no one dies. I hate you with every fiber of my willy. I can't believe that just happened. So we got out of there, breathed the breath of fresh sinnoh air, and continued on our expedition. Now, we traveled via Eterna, made our way through the depths of Mount Cornet, realized we were going the wrong way, made our way via Orberg, ventured the cave, and after beating up countless culties, I found myself a spear pillar, where I instantly 180'd and got the hell out of there because I'll be screwed if I was about to try and take on the distortion world 
world with the team that I've got at hand. Nope, no way, no sir, no chance. The Cyrus fight in the underworld is known to be just the most incredibly difficult fight to come out of, and it's one of the biggest run killers in this region. Heck, in this franchise. And so to that, I say... Not today. Instead, I decided to take on the noble quest of another shiny hunt. This time in a lovely little area where I can find myself a shiny magnet. Now, Magnemite is the rare spawn in this patch, and so I decided to do something incredibly sneaky. It's not cheating, but it's for sure a great area. You see, if I have a Pokemon that just so happens to have the ability Magnet Pool, I can use that by putting the Magnet Pool Pokemon to the front of the party because that increases the chance of running into Steel-type Pokemon. So I caught what we'll call a temporary Magnemite just until, well, uh, until this happens. Selling it all is definitely important. Yeah, I, I don't think... It Okay, so so this is a dilemma. This causes a paradox. Because we, we had a shiny shell loss. Do we kill this as dupes? We're going to catch it regardless. Essentially, we decided to call dupes and keep hunting until we would find another shiny. And literally, within about 50 encounters... Can't you see? Are you serious? What? <laughs> Yo! Well, that's pointless. Um, what's your local big hardware store? <gasps> yes! Finally! Let's... Yes! That's what we're going to see, bro. And listen, I had absolutely no idea how much this little magnet would affect the run. I had no idea that going back to catch the Magnemite, calling the Gastrodon as species slash dupes, and actually persisting with this hunt would literally result in our survival. So the first thing on my list was taking Bingle to Mount Cornet because that location just so happens to have just the right electric current flowing through its atmosphere to allow for a lovely little evolution. Oh my god, what? Bingle's evolving? What? That never happened before. Crazy. Wow. Awesome. Incredible. Fantastic. So then from there, I took Canacity the Hoot Hoot off the shelf and evolved it. No way, Canacity's evolving. Whoa. And then I took Junior and committed the sin that is evolving him. He was perfect and Graveler is just wrong. Yo, Junior's evolving. Gross. So listen, here's my mentality. I've already lost a whole bunch of our best Pokemon. So in this scenario, if I don't bring my best Pokemon, I can't lose my best Pokemon. And that, at the time, in my head, was a totally valid train of thought. So I opted to bring Michael the Rapidash, Canacity the Noctowl, Mox the Umbreon, God the B-Barrel, who exclusively knows HMs, by the way, Bingle the Magnezone, and Junior the Abomination. Before entering the Distortion World, we were thrust into battle with Jupiter and Mars with Al Gore by our side. He's got a lot of very good Mons on his team. He has a lot of incredibly good Mons on his team. Whether he uses them to help us or not is up to him entirely. I need Mr. Al Gore to frickin' steer. I opted to lead with a flamethrower with Michael to Oko the first Bronzor, they set up Reflect and Munchlax stockpiled. Now Mars brings in her Perugly. I want to take out the Bronzor because the Munchlax can do neutral damage against the Perugly, but it can't do neutral damage against... Oh, that's scary. No crits, 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 no crits. Please don't, please. Stop, man! Insta-crit, man! What's the point? The Bronzor didn't die. Oh my god, if they targeted Rapsash. That was terrifying. Okay, Munchlax, please just kill the Bronzor. Stop being selfish! So listen, I pivoted Michael out and brought in Canacity, and on the switch, Bronzor used Rock Slide, which surprisingly did nothing. And now we were staring down a Perugly and a Skuntank, both incredibly scary. Okay, no crits, 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 no crits. Please don't go, 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 please, 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 please. Okay. Oh, I'm getting double targeted, man. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. That's good. Listen, why did that have to happen though? As heartbreaking as it is to lose a Pokemon, we were still in steer mode, so I opted to use our clean switch to bring in Mox the Umbreon. My idea was to use Dig Against Skuntank a whole bunch, and since they were targeting the Munchlax, we were sort of fine. Plus, Lax's body slam powered both of the opposing Pokemon here. So, eventually they managed to kill the Schlax, and Al Gore was free to bring in his Staraptor, who off the rip used Quick Attack to make quick work of the Skuntank. Then, with Mox still underground from Dig, Staraptor used Close Combat to absolutely demolish the cat. See, this is what Ethan could have been. Gosh, wouldn't that have been nice? So now, face off against two gold bats, I opted to bring in Bingo because sure it's not very sportsmanlike towards Al Gore, but Bingo has a slightly better than good special attack stat and the move discharge. So I used that to kill Al Gore's Floatzel and one of the gold bats, putting the other one to a very low HP and finishing it off the next turn with a magnet bot, meaning that we were through. And now, in a fit of rage-induced tomfoolery, Cyrus used technological means to replicate the red chain, which sounds just incredibly sus, but whatever. He summoned the god of space and time, respectively. Satan himself appeared in an incredibly cool cutscene that was completely blocked out by my face cam and completely overruled by the fact that I was very much devouring a biscuit directly in front of it. You know when someone really tall and active sits in front of you in the cinema? That's that's me right now. And instead of basking in the awe and the might of Shadow Garatina, you're looking at this. The lake spirits descended from the sky and they each made their way into a black hole that had formed before us. And so after running away to get a teensy weensy bit more prepared, it was time. I made my way back to Spear Pillar and Cynthia and I gripped hands and leapt into the abyss together. She sort of left me to be the brains of the operation here and watched as I bravely and with great confidence scaled, deciphered and 
triumphed against this strange and foreign dimension. Everything wasn't as it seemed. Gravity was weird, up wasn't up, down wasn't down. You won't subscribe to the Gentle Dude YouTube channel. It was all just horrible. But after following the guidance of the lake spirits to put balls in holes, it was time for what I can now confidently say was the most ludicrous battle of my entire nuzlocking career. But you'll see that for yourself. Awaiting my queen and me was none other than the dude who wanted to claim this place for himself, leaving Earth to collapse in his wake. So I did what I had to do. I challenged him to a battle. I let Junior who was always destined to explode. I wanted to use rock polish to outspeed whoever I was going to explode on, but that was clear to have been the wrong idea. Because after using Will-O-Wisp, this houndoom used one single dark pulse to do this. The burn killed Junior and I didn't see a win condition. This houndoom was fast and strong. I did not foresee a universe where we could make it out of this, and then I did the worst thing a Pokemon player can do. I misclicked this deer. That's- n I didn't click that! Bruv, I hate this game, I hate this game, I hate this game, I hate this game. I keep clicking and then it just responds too quickly and it's GG's. I didn't click it. It's still stab, it should do something, but we're Will-O-Wisp, so it's gonna do less. I'm trying to lower its defense. It's gonna use Thunderfang. We're gonna die. Oh, we lose. If we lose, I don't know if I can keep doing this. I don't know if I can start again, to be honest. Please lower defense. Please. No. And then God dies. What's the point, man? What is the point? Listen, I killed everyone. It's my fault that we're in this position in the first place. Not that it really mattered, to be honest, because what was a B-Barrel gonna do? There was no way out. Unless... Oh, man, that's so rough. After all this, man. After all this. We do outspeed. We need some flinches. Oh, my God. Either crit or one more flinch. <gasps> Oh my god, Michael! Oh my god! Oh my god! My plan from here was to bring in Mox because I wanted to try and toxic the Gyarados that Cyrus brought in. We took a waterfall on the switch, then took another and I clicked toxic. Mox, come on, man! Not now! Not now! Not now, bruv! Not now. Not now. Please, not now. No crits. Oh, not now, Mox. Not now. Why did you miss, bro? We could have got a sand attack off as well. And then it would be the second turn of poison. Oh, no. It's using waterfall. Can anyone take this? It's not worth switching. Mox has to die. I can't believe Mox threw that. Oh, man. I hate that I'm doing this. This is the only way we win this. Oh, my God. Okay. This is rough. So with Mox down, God down, Junior down, I decided to bring Michael back out. There was no real way out, and every single one of our Pokemon is weak to specifically this Gyarados. Waterfall and Earthquake against Michael, Earthquake being quad effective on Bingo, and Ice Fang being super effective on Noah. So I landed on Michael because Michael knows protect. We're gonna we're gonna protect still. We're gonna protect. We're gonna stomp. It's going for waterfall. See if Michael outspeeds and gets the flinch. Please flinch. Please flinch. Or crit. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god, Michael! That's insane! Michael's so good! Oh my god, man! Oh my god! It's possible! It's so possible! Okay, now there was a sliver of hope. It's not likely, but it's possible. Punch Crow hit the field and I opted to Flamethrower, which managed to do over half. Okay, we survive. And another... Wait, we survive. 143. 68, we survive. One more Flamethrower kills. Crobat's next. Crobat has cross poison, toxic. Oh my god, we win! Oh my god, we win! We win! Because Crobat comes in, Crobat has. A what just happened? Wait, no. <gasps> Michael, no! It was a low roll, bruv! It was a low roll, no! Why? Oh my god, oh my god, only one Pokemon survives. Oh my god, this is ludicrous. Oh my god, this is ludicrous. Oh my god, this is ludicrous. Okay, so, so Noah uses anything. But it has to be accurate. Hyper voice is 100 accuracy. Yes, okay. So, hyper voice. Okay, outspeed. I didn't think he'd heal. I thought he hated Pokemon, bruv. We lose. No, we don't lose. Because here's the thing. If we can kill the Honchkrow, if we can kill the... Oh, the... why did it low roll? Because if we can kill the Honchkrow, like, the, the Crobat has nothing. Nothing for bingo. Okay. Promising. Do we outspeed? Noah, please don't low roll. Please don't do what Rapidash did. Please don't do what Rapidash did, please. Okay, 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 listen, listen. Oh my god, this is insane. The Wait, Weevil comes out. I didn't- Okay, yeah, because it's not the same as the other games where it's like, that's his ace. Uh, what I want to do is gonna fake out, right? Oh, do I just switch now? No, I don't. If we survive this, which we don't. Do we? Please survive one, please survive one. Please just- Hold on, no, okay. 
I thought it would freak out. Okay, so um, my mentality there was if I could get the Feather Dance off, then its attack gets lowered, which means that Bingo wins. Stab Magnet Bomb, please do a lot. How much does Ice Punch do? If this does a lot, we lose. If this does a lot, we lose. Oh my god. Please don't freeze. If they get the freeze, if they get the freeze, I swear to god, I'm never playing Pokemon ever again. This is the last you'll see of me. Please do over half. Stop doing exactly half! Okay, no freeze, no freeze, no freeze. If this freezes, I am never playing Pokemon again in my life. If this freezes, I'm never playing Pokemon ever again, ever again. Please, please kill, please kill. Please kill because the Crobat has nothing for Bingo. Please, 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 please. Oh my god, Bingo. Oh my god, Bingo. Oh my god, bruv. Oh my god. Oh my god. Crobat has Cross Poison, which doesn't affect us. Toxic, that doesn't affect us. Confuse Ray, which could absolutely screw us. And Air Slash. We win. Ladies and gentlemen, oh my god, this was the most ludicrous battle I've ever had in my entire life. Oh, bingo, you animal, bro. What just happened? What just happened? Bro, Rapidash just steered. Rapidash just solo steered, bro. Oh my god, that was intense. What the hell just happened? I don't deserve to even beat, like, what on earth? even was that? Listen, it's fine, sort of, because now we can claim our prize. I had a master ball in my bag, the Cyrus fight was behind us, Bingo the lone survivor on the team, and so, step by step, I approached destiny. Giratina circled like a shark on the prowl of its prey. The steps manifested before me and I took them, slowly approaching the final one. Giratina descended and I saved my progress, because it was time, my friends, to hunt for one of, if not the most incredible shiny legendary to ever grace the Pokemon franchise. Yo! Already! We found it! Shiny Giratina is on the friggin' screen! 130 encounters! And we got the Giratina. I'm not risking it. Because Bingo's the only Pokemon left, so if it kills Bingo, we're screwed. Let's go! Only 2 hours and 14 minutes in. But, uh, I sort of voted against using it. I didn't want to be given the option to sweep using the Legendary, and so Gabe the Giratina hit the box. Never to be seen from again. Now, when we leave the Distortion World, we're brought back to a place that Cynthia refers to as the Send-Off Spring, which is pretty sinister. But, hey, speaking of sinister, there's a massive patch of grass right above the entrance to the cave here, and when I went to take a look at who I could get, I came up with a big brain. Because after running around for a little, I found that I could get my hands on a Dusclops, and I realized that a lot of the Pokemon weren't spawning at the same level that the Clops does. So I went back to our box, grabbed a Pokemon who I could use to repel my nip for the Pokemon that I want. See, the way that a repel works is that it prevents Pokemon from encountering you, provided the Pokemon that you're trying to repel is of lower level than the Pokemon at the front of your party. So using that mechanic to my advantage, I hunted for Clops in an encounter pool of only two Pokemon, being the Dusclops, of course, and Staravia. And so, after a long time searching, Damn it, Ethan! Why? What's the purpose of this? We've already got three! We don't need more! I found it when I was looking for Doer Ludon. I was looking for a shit. Why am I here? I hate this. Gotta go do it. Ah, oh, come on! Why? So three phases and about five hours of running back and forth. It was a long day until the beautiful blood demon finally showed up for us. Yes! Finally! Ah! It's over! You're such a good shiny! Yes! <sighs> Stand. And what better way to celebrate a five plus hour shiny hunt than with another shiny hunt? Whatever. After about two more hours in this stream, I found a Pokemon befitting our criteria of color deficiency. Four. Yes! Yes! Finally! Ah! So with that lunacy over with, I made my way to Sunny Shore City where our last gym challenge resides. I made my way to a lighthouse and spoke to a guy, fiery looking figure, who told me that he was going to unleash everything in his arsenal on me. And so I took that as a challenge. I had to. You know, give it your all because you're only 10 forever, right? Anyway, I flawlessly and with incredible grace made my way through most of the gym trainers before I realized that actually we hadn't hunted to the west of Snowpoint. And in that area, if I was lucky, I might be able to get my hands on a certain little- Yes! That was quick! Thank you. So I swiftly evolved King Boo the Swine Up into a very bleached pillow swine. Now, interestingly, I checked to see if I had a heart scale and I was in luck. Because if I was able to make my way over to Pastoria, I could find the move relearner's house. And what's interesting about that is that I would be able to teach pillow swine the move Ancient Power. And if I do that, pillow swine could grow one single level and turn into one of the most incredible Pokemon we might hope to grace in this run. King Boo! Mama Swine! 
Are you looking at the same thing that I'm looking at? Look at King Boo thrive, bro. So promptly, I flew back to Sunny Shore and rearranged the Pokemon in my party and boxed to best fit this gym. I made my way through the final trainer and spent much longer than I care to admit solving the final puzzle before finally taking on Volknur. Now, he leads Jolteon and I lead Senna, and so after taking a Thunder Wave, I opted to use Will-O-Wisp. Then I wanted to pivot over to Harper's, who took a hit and then set up two layers of Toxic Spikes before swapping again over to Roman. Now, the idea here is to set up a Reflect and eventually pivot over to King Boo the Mamoswine. Now, Volknur will use a potion to heal the Jolteon, and here I wanted to hunt for the Ancient Power Omni Boost. We did take super effective hits from Iron Tail, but because of the Reflect and the Burn, we didn't really take much damage. Then, eventually, as the Jolteon was one sneeze from death, we found what we were hunting for. Please, AP boost, please. Please, please, please. Please just boost, please. Yes! Massive. Massive omnibus. And that put our friend Boo here in a fantastic spot. The Raichu hit the field, got badly poisoned from the spikes earlier, but that didn't even matter because Boo literally outsped, hit one single earthquake, and O-Code the Raichu. Then Electivire came out. We EQ here. Does this kill off the rip? Yo, the RNG! Come on, please. No way. Yo! <laughs> Yo! King Boo! Let's freaking go, man. This Pokemon. We got the Omni Boost on the last possible attempt. Okay, so now this thing does outspeed and Fire Fang is moderately scary and our Fizz Death is just normal, but no one can really take it well. I have faith that we survive one. Oh, we outspeed anyway, bro. The Omni Boost goes so crazy. That goes so hard. AP Boost. Mate, look at this. The, the Luxury is going to die for sure. Get out of here. Nuts. Oh my god, bro. What can I say? Sometimes the plan just goes to plan, and gosh, it feels good when that transpires. I was on Cloud9 with eight badges in my hand, seven people cheering in chat, six Pokemon still alive on the team, five fingers on my hand, four Elite Four members to fight, three hours until I had to go to bed, two eyes, and one dream. It was finally time to surf north, beat up a bunch of trainers, and find myself at what was sure to be our final encounter. It was actually my second to final encounter, but I want this to be dramatic, so just bear with me. Especially because this shiny hunt would go on to take the entirety of three streams, and I wouldn't actually find it until the fourth. See, once upon a time, I had the opportunity to hunt for a shiny gibble, but that dream was quashed by Peacenake the Onyx. However, in the second level of Victory Road, I had my second chance. I've been patient, and it turns out that the encounters here coincide perfectly, literally just by pure chance. You see, my friends, in this part of the cave, we can encounter ourselves Golbat, which would be dupes, Graveler, which would be dupes, Magneton, which would be dupes, Onyx, which would be dupes, Steelix, which is an Evo of Onyx, i.e. dupes, and Gabite. Do you know what that means? That means that so long as I'm patient, the only Pokemon that doesn't fall under Dupe's Claws is Gabite. And so it's a no-brainer. If I had any shot at this, it was going to be with the Ground Shark. Why would anyone proceed without it if it's literally guaranteed? Probably because of this. Mm. That's not what we're looking for. No! Whoa, what? Ganondorf is my- Yo! That's a golden Steelix! No! Ugh. Damn it! No! <laughs> no! No! Why? No! Why? Plus, Garchomp super resists Flint, man. Ah! I wonder how long in in-game hours we've been doing this. Why? 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 My friends, 11 phases and 4 entire streams, but finally, my patience was about to be rewarded. Dude, how am I not finding any sh- I found two shinies like- Dude, the Steelix, see the last- <gasps> ah! Ah! It's real! Ah! Ah! It's over! Oh, it's, it's over! It's over, Athena! Ah! Oh, it's finally over, bro! <laughs> Oh, it's over. God, thank you. Oh my God, it's finally over. That was incredibly grueling, but I earned my prize. I finally found my hero. The pseudo legendary of this game was mine. And not only that, but Psycho is evolving. Losing its incredible shiny, I know, but the power, my friends, that doesn't even look shiny. All of that effort for this. That's such a bad shiny Pokemon.
<laughs> oh man, okay. So with Cycle the now Garchomp making the squad infinitely more powerful, I breezed my way through Victory Road to finally make it to the Pokemon League. My friends, it has all led to this. I say two months of streams, it was actually two and a half months of streams, man. And this was it. But here's where I'm gonna apologize, because for everyone who was here on stream and for myself, there was an overarching attachment to these Pokemon, and I was a cabbage who, without even second guessing myself, walked straight into the Pokemon League. And if you know anything about the series of set events in Pokemon Platinum, you'll know that this is exactly where your rival will sprint up to you and sucker punch you with his Pokemon. And most people prepare for that, but I forgot that it even happened. And, um... Yeah. Al Gore led his Staraptor and I led Psycho. Off the rip, they used U-turn to swap on out to float so We landed the Dragon Claw to do some good damage, but without even hesitating, I assumed that Garchomp would outspeed. And due to my cabadry, we took an Ice Fang. Aquajet? Ice Fang! No! No! Please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please. Please, 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 please. Oh my god, my soul. So sure, Psycho took the fox out, but it wasn't looking very live, laugh, love. Al Gore brought in his Infernape, and I promptly swapped over to Senna the Dusclops to negate the fighting type move. Then the idea was to swap straight over to Peacenake to sack. After a flamethrower and a focus blast, Peacenake fell as planned, and that allowed for the free switch to Lavidian the Water Fox, who landed a nasty waterfall and then took a focus blast. So as long as we survive this, this thing dies. My god, his team's scary. We're gonna have to steer so hard right now. Oh my god, no crits. No! What? How? It was in this position that I realized we fully might not even get a shot at the Elite Four. We might have come all this way for nothing. They always told me the algorithm was unforgiving, but I did not foresee this much blood. I brought in Senna, for even though the EV Light doesn't exist in Gen 4, Senna's defensive stats were crazy. We took a Shadow Claw and landed a Shadow Punch that killed the Fire Monkey. Rosarade was next in because it wants to Shadow Ball, and I stayed in with Senna, and with some serious, serious, serious RNG on my side, we avoided the first Shadow Ball and followed that with a critical hit Shadow Punch. The second Shadow Ball landed, but Senna held on by a thread, meaning that the Rosarade was destined to fall. Heracross came in and I saw my way out, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't proud of this play. You see, the Heracross sees a kill at this range with any move except from close combat, because that doesn't affect Senna, which means I can swap over to Bingo and take minuscule damage from an Aerial Ace, knowing that it would click close combat the following turn. And I could entirely stall out close combat by simply switching back and forth between Bingo and Senna, and that's exactly what I did. Once I was sure the bug didn't have any close combats left, I stayed in with Bingle to take it out with relative ease. God, I'm clever. The Snorlax hit the field and I swapped over to King Boo because this Snorlax has Earthquake and Bingle would drop to one of those without question. We took a lot of damage but retaliated with an Earthquake of our own which did over half. We then took a Body Slam that did a huge chunk but we got lucky and it didn't paralyze meaning that Boo was able to kill the Snorlax. Staraptor's last and I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Realistically, there was no other answer than to sack King Boo, which sucks. I used Ice Shard knowing that Boo would have to fall but the tactic wasn't over yet because I know that this Staraptor has close combat, which again is why Senna dodging that first Shadow Ball earlier was absolutely monumental. The best stroke of luck that I could have ever, ever asked for. Because I could use the Bingo Senna pivot strat to stall out all of the birds' close combats, just like I did with the Heracross. Then finally, I had Bingo use Discharge to put the battle to bed. That was heartbreaking, but more importantly, so insanely lucky. If Senna didn't dodge that exact turn, it wasn't possible. We should have lost the run right there. With the tragedies that we just endured, chat was diligent enough to go back through the streams and find out not only where I hadn't encountered a Pokemon yet, but who we could get in any given place. And as it so happened, there was only really one Pokemon that seemed worth it with our current best team composition, and that was Houndour. To have a blue Houndoom on the team would give us a much, much better shot at a W, and so we decided that that was the play. First though, I utilized the mechanic that would honestly really help us here, and for the next hour or so, I scavenged the underground hunting for heart skills so that I could change my team's movesets before taking on the big dogs. Once we had enough of that, we went to hunt for the fire puppy, and to my shock, with zero phases beforehand, we found it. Yes! That was so quick! That was so- Yes! Blue dog! Let's go! Massive. No! And so I devoted the rest of the stream to Elite Four preparations and making sure that everything was in place to give us the best shot at this as possible. Once I was satisfied that everything that I could cover for was covered for, I called it and I went to bed. The next day was it. The entire day at work, I was anxious, staring at the clock, unsure if the day would ever end. Seconds felt like hours and everything we'd grinded towards for literally over two months was about to come to an end. One way or another. Before I knew it,
the time was finally upon us. I presented my badges to the security guard, made my way through the door, and found myself in a room with Aaron, the first of the Elite Four. After making sure that I prepped in every way I could from here, I pressed the button and the first fight was underway. Aaron leads his Yan Mega and I shot for Psycho. Now, off the rip, I wanted to flamethrower, which without a crit, still absolutely incinerated the bug. Drapion hit the field, and so straight off the rip, I wanted to swap on over to Senna to take the ice fight. And after taking two, we were comfortably able to get off a of will o -Wisp before swapping over to Bengal. And Bengal was able to finish off the Drapion with a T-Boat, and Aaron brought in Heracross, who, believe it or not, has close combat, which we already have a tried and tested tactic for. So we stole the bug out of his close combats by pivoting between Bingo and Senna. Then, when it was out, Bingo took a nasty mega horn and we shot for Barrier, but to be honest, I didn't like where we stood. So I shot for T-Bolt the next turn, which did a solid number on this thing, allowing us to swap over to Psycho, take another just incredibly painful hit, and floor the Heracross with a flamethrower. Vespaquin was next, and since it wants to attack order, I swapped Roman to Discharge. Then Aaron healed his Queen Bee, and another couple of Discharges did the job. Scissor was next, and against this thing, I decided that Reflecting was worth risking the crit. So I did, and since we didn't get punished, I swapped Harper's in who took no damage on the switch. But RNG Odoo does as she pleases, and it just so happened that this very turn, she pleased to destroy any confidence I had that we could do this. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, no Harper's, no! With Harper's getting crit and the crit absolutely mattering, we were one of our best Pokemon down and Harper's was our main tactic for Bertha. This was not good. I brought in Psycho to Flamethrower and finish the job and Aaron was through. But with Harper's the hero falling to an incredibly unfortunate crit, most of my Bertha strategy was, well, dead. She has three Pokemon who are quad weak to grass and Roserade comfortably outspeeds every single one. Of course that had to happen, right? Anyway, after healing up the remnants of my squad, the five of us and Harper's wilting corpse approach the podium and commence battle. We make it through or we go down swinging. Bertha, of course, leads Whiskash. I led Psycho. Off the rip, we use Dragon Claw that all but killed and they use that turn to set up Sandstorm, which would come back to haunt me later. Anyway, after Bertha healed, two more hits did the job and the Whiskerfish fell. Glasgow hit the field and to avoid taking a quad effective Ice Fang, I swapped to Senna, who took not a lot of damage. We took an EQ before retaliating with an Ice Punch that did less than I expected considering it was quad effective. And so predicting another Earthquake, I swapped to Roman who was immune. The reason for that was to outspeed the next turn and set up a Reflect. I realized that here, rather than switching back, Roman was our best bet against the Gliscor, so I stayed in and used Ominous Wind until the Scorpion went down. Hippowdon was next in and I opted to swap over to Psycho who took a yawn on the swap. I didn't really like any switches here and so I shot for a Surf that did a lot, but Psycho fell asleep and so we were victim to RNG. We could wait up whenever, but RNG was not playing games with us. We stayed asleep, took a hit, stayed asleep, took a hit, stayed asleep, took a hit, and the reflected worn off. We stayed asleep, and now Earthquake was doing much, much more damage. In this spot, one more Earthquake would kill Psycho, and so I swapped over to Roman, who wouldn't take an Earthquake because of the levity. Then, after setting up a Reflect, we survived a crunch and pivoted over to Senna, who ate a crunch. But the Sandstorm was doing too much chip damage to comfortably stay in. The swap was bad, and I needed a miracle. If Psycho doesn't wake up, we lose. That's the answer. If Psycho does not wake up, then we lose the run right now. We take a hit, we take a crunch, which will do about 30 damage, unless it crits. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wake up. What? <laughs> Bruv! What? Now, Rhyperior came in, and this is where I messed up, because I did not account for a specific mechanic. All Rock-type Pokemon have their special defenses increased by 50% in a Sandstorm. We have got a quad-effective move in our hands right now. This has got to kill. <laughs> no! It's got- it's only got Citrus- WHY DID THAT NOT KILL?! WHY DID THAT NOT KILL?! Ah! Ah! Psycho was dead. I brought Ouroboros in to kill the Rhyperior and one-shot the Golem, but I was inconsolable at this point. This run took months. This run took months. I'm legitimately devastated, because the next one's Flint. We can't beat Flint with this team. And I'm sorry to say, my friends, Gentle Dude was right. He couldn't beat Flint with this team. He tried, but after setting up the sun and outspeeding, Flint's Houndoom killed Bingo and his Infernape went on to KO every one of the rest of our team. That is um, about two, two and a half months of gameplay. And Flint, this will not be the last you hear from me.